Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here. As always, I wanna thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Well, I am actually here just chilling. I you know, had to go down the road, do some work and things. Um, and of course I'm back and actually relaxing a little bit here. Get finished with this, I'm gonna go cook some dinner and eat. Um, still dealing with the fallout from where the Dallas Cowboys are right now. The Cowboys have thus far disappointed, but see, here's the thing, man. It's still way early in the season. We got problems. You know, we've lost players, but most teams have lost players. You can't blame it on injuries as, you know, we used to say, the next man up. And this is the reality of the season. This season is going to be a season where you're losing people left and right. Uh, the players just really did not have enough time to really train and get themselves together for the season. I mean, you know, I hate to say it, but it is what it is, and you're going to have to do the best you can. And this is going to be one of those seasons that it's different, and you got to look at it differently than any other one. And for our Cowboys to go through and change coaching philosophy on a shortened season, it's just not enough time to teach. You know, I think about with woodworking, the things I'm doing now that I've learned how to do them, versus what I did 10 years ago. 10 years ago, they were really good. Now they're exceptional. Things I did 20 years ago, they, they were passable, but they were nothing like what I did 10 years ago. It takes time to learn and become a master at a craft. So regardless, I, we have a lot of cowboy fans that are panicking and saying, you know, hey, you know, we, we just need to blow it all up and just give up on the season and just start all over. And the first thing we need to do is we need to tank for Trevor. As bad as we are right now, as bad as we are right now, we have one victory. If the draft, if the season ended today and the draft were to start, we'd beat seventh spot. Seventh spot. Now understand, when I think the Washington franchise moved up in the draft to get RG3, I think they were about around the seventh spot. And they used three number ones and a second to get up there. Just to move up like six bases. So now you're talking about taking three number ones conceivably. You know, you, you saw what Chicago did to move up one place to get Mitch Trubisky. Boy, was that a mess. And we understand how a team is built. So think about, I want you to think about this. If we were to draft Trevor Lawrence and we had to move up, because I don't know that the Jets are going to win a game. I honestly don't know that the Jets will win a game. I just really feel like they're not going to. Let's say we did take three number ones. So could you imagine like saying, okay, CeeDee Lamb, bye-bye. Could you say a young Tyron Smith, bye-bye. Could you say a young Zach Martin, bye-bye for a quarterback, that's great in college, but has yet to play a game in the pros. Because the idea is Dak Prescott, you know, he, he can't pay him. You can't pay Dak Prescott. And it's funny that people say this because the Cowboys, after two good seasons of D-Law, Let's be honest here. And D Law is getting a lot of crap from a lot of people. And and I, I apologize, D Law, but you don't want people to talk bad about you. Don't give them anything bad to talk about you. But D Law had, coming off of back surgery and a PED suspension, had a 14 sack season, which was great. Followed it up with a 10 sack season. Two years. Two years, okay? Two great seasons. First year, two sacks in the playoffs. Is that what it was? And then maybe six sacks his second year. Am I, I may be wrong with that. But that's all you had on him. A guy who had back surgery, a guy that had two really good years, and you made him one of the highest paid defensive linemen in football. Two out of the three years. I mean, excuse me, two out of the four years or five years that he was here. Okay. Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins, who 
Vosh used to say, you know what, I want to push him off a bridge. Had one really good year. He got his contract. Got his contract. One good year. And he's scheduled to have hip surgery tomorrow. He got paid. Your running back, Zeke Elliott, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with paying Zeke Elliott because the reality is with Zeke Elliott is he's still one of the best backs in football. He does a lot of dirty works, up, although he's got to work on catching the ball. He's got to worry about, oh, no screen passes. I need you to hold on to the ball. And I need you to stop fumbling. But when you looked at the dynamics and where the salary cap may go, you look at that and say, it's better for us to pay him now than to wait till later on to pay him because the price will go up quite a bit. And as we've seen, running backs are coming back in style. And you see like Christian McCaffrey get a real big contract as well as, you know, Alvin Kamara and some others. So it would have cost you more later, even though technically he could be on his fifth year option year right now, in which case you didn't pay him all that yet. You look at Jared Goff, his rookie year, most experts said he's not an NFL quarterback. Sean McVay comes in, uses the hell out of the screen pass, and uses Todd Gurley to perfection. Gets him to a Super Bowl. Last year, definitely a regression. Definitely. And you look at it and say he's had one good year. He got paid. You look at Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz, 2017 MVP candidate. But let's be 100% honest right here, right now. Does anybody think that Carson Wentz is an elite quarterback, a guy that's a game changer? Last year, he was not that great. The year before, Nick Foles bailed him out again. He was five and six. And, you know, as much as they say, well, he doesn't have guys around him. Here's, you know, it, it, it's kind of crazy that with Dak Prescott, they say, well, you know, you elevate the people around you. And see, when I look at what happened with the Cowboys, because here's what's interesting. Everybody talks about the weapons that Dak Prescott has. Oh, well, he's got great weapons and the best offensive line of football. We don't have the best offensive line of football. Far from it. Far from it. Zach Martin, great Great guard. Tyron Smith has played in two games. Connor Williams, not quite there. We've had rookies, rookie undrafted free agents starting in some of these games. But when you take a guy like Randall Cobb, who people had written off at Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers passing to you, no less, he has the best season he's had since 2014 with Dak Prescott. Amari Cooper who was with Derek Carr and the Raiders, four years, four years, regressed. They checked out. Raiders thought they fleeced us. But yet he's still one of the top wide receivers in football. He stays nicked up. But you look at the instant chemistry and how much better he's playing now with Dak Prescott versus what he played with the Raiders. You have to look at that and say his play elevated with being with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Just like... Randall Cobb, Michael Gallup. Oh, man, Michael Gallup, he's a great receiver. But it's funny because nobody thought that coming out of the draft. When he came out of the draft, he was a third-round draft pick. And a lot of teams passed on him. I think he was the 12th or the 13th wide receiver taken. And now he's one of the top in his class. Is that because everybody just missed on him, or he's a better wide receiver because of Dak? I'm just asking. Blake Jarwin started out catching the ball really well, got injured. Then we have Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz, everybody's like, nah, he's just a blocking tight end. Yet, tight end position hasn't skipped a beat. I would say Dalton Schultz is actually playing better than Jason Witten was last year. Am I wrong on that? Blake Bell who had Pat Mahomes throwing, he was straight up blocking. He, he never got the ball. I believe he's got four or five catches already this season. So you look at this and you say, Dak is making these guys better. So back to the original thing. If you tank for Trevor Lawrence, there's no guarantee that Trevor Lawrence is going to be the guy. 
we've seen a lot of guys that were deemed to be the guy that ended up being just the guy. You're going to give up draft capital where you've got major holes across the board, major holes across the board that need to be filled. And as this person said, you know, we'll take the money that we paid Dak Prescott and we put it on the defense. Well, spending money on the defense isn't exactly the thing that works. We owe, you know, next year, 25 million to D-Law, the next year, 27 million to D-Law, the year after that, 29 million to D-Law. We owe $10 million this year to Tyrone Crawford. We owe um, 10 million a year for the next three or four years for that. Where you make an impact, where you make an impact on a team is by making your draft picks become great players because see here's the thing your rookies your rookies when you draft guys you've got them locked up for four to five years dirt cheap van der Esch only costs us like a million two a year right now this is on his rookie deal so you can take those three number ones that you're saying to use on trevor You can actually step back in the draft and create more picks. Try and get more players to get more bodies. Because in the end, one player isn't enough. Take a look down at the Texans right now. The Texans, they just paid Deshaun Watson $39 million. That's however you look at it. You can say he's the highest paid or you can say the second highest paid. Because really, Pat Mahomes' money doesn't kick in until down the road, and technically they have an out on it. But either way, he's getting $39 million a year. And they figure, that's all we need is the quarterback. You know? The quarterback elevates the people around him. So we can trade DeAndre Hopkins for a second-round pick. And we can just bring in Randall Cobb. How's that working out for him? Regardless of what they say, you still have to have players. Yes, a quarterback can elevate them. A quarterback can make players around them better. But you have to have talent. And the more talent you have, that elevation is only going to go so far. And that's the difference. You need the guys that are there. But if you don't have a quarterback, take a look at last night. Kansas City would have lost it. If Cam Newton had not caught COVID... Bill Belichick wins that game last night. Hoyer, you know, you just figure out, just throw anybody in there. Cam Newton is doing some real stuff there in New England. He doesn't throw a pick six there. He's got his legs to help get him out of there. Quarterback makes a difference, a huge difference. And the fact that we have one, and this is not one of those records that you necessarily want to have, but right now, through four games, the 1,670 yards that Dak Prescott has already thrown and the nine TDs, nine TDs, plus three rushing, you can't just replace that with a rookie. It just doesn't happen. FYI, add that one to another record for Dak Prescott. For the first four games, nobody has thrown that kind of money. Nobody. So those who are saying tank for Trevor, are you stupid or something or just plain dumb? We got a lot of problems on the Dallas Cowboys, but you got a quarterback that never gives up, that the players believe in. They don't give up, at least not on the offense, that they always think that they're in there. And that guy puts it all on the line every single week. I just don't know how some of you can't see it. Maybe y'all.